In this video, we're going to cover how to graph a linear equation by using a table of values. All right, so we're going to start here by looking at graphing the equation y equals 2x plus 3. And the great thing about utilizing a table is that all we need to do when we're utilizing a table to help us graph is we need to pick values for x and find our corresponding values for y. That's all we're going to do. So since we can pick whatever values for x that we want, I tend to stay right here around the y-axis. I like to pick the values that are in the middle of the table. So I pick values like x equals negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And all we're going to do here is we're going to substitute values in for x and find the y value that corresponds with them. So I'm going to do my work down here at the bottom of the page. So I'm going to start with x equals negative 2. And I'm going to say, okay, when x equals negative 2, we have y equals 2 times negative 2 plus 3, which is 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1. So when x is negative 2, the y value that's paired with it is negative 1. And then what we can do is we can go over to our graph and we can plot that. So we can go to x is negative 2, y is negative 1. And we want to label that on our graph. So we have x is negative 2, y is negative 1. Then from here, we're going to do the second point. So we have x is equal to negative 1. So then we have y equals 2 times negative 1 plus 3. So that's really negative 2 plus 3, which is 1. So when x is negative 1, y is 1. So we go x is negative 1, y is 1. And we plot that point. x is negative 1, y is 1. And then from here, we look at the next point. So we have x is equal to 0. So y equals 2 times x is 0. I then get 0 plus 3 is equal to 3. So when x is 0, y is 3. And again, I go through and I plot that. x is 0, y is 3. Then from here, we have x equals 1. So you have y equals 2 times 1 plus 3, which is really 2 plus 3, which is 5. So when x is 1, y is 5. So we have x is 1, y is 5. And then from here, we can also see that we have our last point of x is equal to 2. So I have y equals 2 times 2 plus 3, which is 4 plus 3 and equals 7. So if we plot that, we have x is 2, y is 7. So here I have five nice points plotted, and I can start to see the shape of that line. So once I can see the shape of that line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my graph, and I'm going to connect those dots in a linear fashion. So you can see my line right there. So these are the four good qualities that I expect to see in all of your graphs. And you'll notice that I did these as I plotted my points on the previous graph. So the first thing you always need to do is you need to scale the y-axis and the x-axis on the graph if they are not already there. Most graphs, I will give you numbers on the y-axis and x-axis. If I don't, you need to scale it so I know what each hash mark means. Second, your points need to be clearly plotted. So you'll notice I had clearly plotted points with dots and labeled. So that means you need to label them as their x, y coordinate. So that means it would need to be like 7, 3 or whatever it might be. You need to label it with the point next to your dot. The third thing that you'll need to do is your graph needs to be drawn through the coordinate Plane. So it needs to fully extend all the way to the right, all the way to the left, all the way up, all the way down. You need to extend it all the way through the coordinate plane. Don't just connect the dots, but extend it all the way through the coordinate plane. So if you have your coordinate plane here and you graph on there, I should see something that looks like this. It extends all the way through. 
And then finally, the fourth requirement is that you add arrows onto the ends of your line in order to extend the line both directions to communicate that that graph continues on past the coordinate plane. So that equation that you're graphing extends past the coordinate plane and we communicate that it keeps going by utilizing arrows. If you don't have arrows, I assume your line stopped, which is generally not true if you're graphing an equation. So unless it's specified, you're going to have arrows extending that line forever in both directions. Arrows are required. I will dock you if you do not have arrows because those arrows communicate something to the person reading your graph. So before we graph a couple of other linear equations, we need to talk about what to do if our y value is not alone. So if our equation isn't written in that y equals form that we saw a couple slides ago when we graphed. Um, and if y is not alone, what we have to do is we have to rewrite our equation. We actually have to take that equation and rewrite it so that y is alone, which is actually a lot easier to do than you might think. So to start by looking at this one, I know that there's no coefficient in front of the y, so I'm going to put the 1 in there, and then utilize keep change change so I don't make an error. So I can see there that I have 3x plus negative 1y is equal to 7, and my goal is to get this y value completely by itself. So what I need to start doing is I need to start moving everything away from the y. So here I'm going to start by undoing this 3x here. And I can move the entire 3x if I just subtract 3x from each side. So as I do 3x minus 3x, that becomes 0. So I'm left with negative 1y is equal to 7. And then I have, you can write minus 3x or I like to write plus negative 3x. Then from here, y is almost alone, but I'm still multiplying it by that negative 1. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. So on the left-hand side, I'm just left with y. On the right-hand side, I do each one at a time. So I do 7 divided by negative 1, which is negative 7. And then I do negative 3 divided by a negative 1, which is a positive 3x. So I can rewrite these for y by themselves. We are capable of rewriting them by using our knowledge of solving equations. We just need to move all of the items over that are not y and then divide by the coefficient of y. Now, this form is commonly called function form. So function form is typical when y is by itself. So when I say to write this into function form, you're going to start by writing it into y equals form. And we like to do that in order to make graphing with a table a little bit easier. So we can pick our values for x and find the corresponding values for y quite easily. So here we have another example of an equation that we want to graph. And what we notice is that in this one, the y value is not by itself. So we need to rewrite this equation into function form before we can actually graph it. So I'm going to start by utilizing keep change change here, and then I'm going to try to get the y value by itself. So I'm going to start by adding 6x to each side, noting that when I do that, we undo the negative 6x on the left, so we're left with negative 2y is equal to negative 12 plus 6x. So notice that we're not combining the negative 12 and the 6x together because they are not alike terms. Then from here, we need to get the y by itself, so we're going to divide both sides by negative 2. As I do that, I end up with just y on the right, and y equals negative 12 divided by negative 2 is 6, plus 6 divided by negative 2 is a negative 3x. So I now have my equation written in function form. I then need to pick my values for x so that I can find the corresponding values for y. So I'm going to do negative 2 to 2. And then I'm just going to show my work as I calculate all of my points. So I'm going to start with x equals negative 2. So I have y equals 6 plus negative 3 times negative 2 which is 6 plus 6 is equal to 12. 
Then I have x is equal to negative 1, so we have y equals 6 plus negative 3 times negative 1. 6 plus 3 is 9. We then have 0, so y equals 6 plus 3 times 0 is 6 plus 0, so that's 6. So then I can fill in those first couple points there. Then I move on to x equals 1. So I have y equals 6 plus negative 3 times 1, which is 6 plus negative 3, which is 3. And then I have x is equal to 2. So that's y equals 6 plus negative 3 times 2 which is negative 6 plus 6, which is 0. So now I have my five points calculated. So here's now where labeling can be really important. So I'm going to go up by threes here. So that's going to be 3, 6, 9, 12. And then I'm going to go just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then these will go back as well and be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, so on and so forth. So I'm now going to go on and plot my points. So my first point is at negative 2, 12. So I can plot that as negative 2, comma 12. Then I have negative 1, comma 9, 0, comma 6, 1, comma 3, 2 comma 0 and I can see that my line is forming and then I'm going to draw it all the way through the coordinate plane with arrows nice and straight. You guys have rulers so this should be looking a lot straighter. So I have it going through the coordinate plane with arrows on both sides. All of my points are clearly plotted and labeled. So final example here we note that y is not by itself so this isn't written in function form. So the first thing we need to do is rewrite this equation so y is by itself. So here I'm going to use keep change change and I notice I need to get the y's by themselves on one side of the equation. So my first step is going to be to subtract 4x from each side. Noticing as I do this that I have negative 8y left on the left hand side then I have negative 16 plus negative 4x and noticing that I'm not combining the 16 and the negative 4x because they are in fact not like terms. Then from here, I'm going to divide each side by a negative 8 to get the y value by itself. So here we have y equals negative 16 over negative 8 is 2. And here I then have negative 4 over negative 8, which I know if I simplify that becomes a positive 1 half x. So there is my equation. So from here, I'm now going to pick values for x. So again, you can pick negative 2 to 2, or you can mix it up if you'd like to pick different values. I'm going to stick with negative 2 to 2. Um, so I'm going to start calculating those down below. So I have x equals negative 2. So we start and we have y equals 2 plus 1 half times negative 2. So that's really 2 plus 1 half times negative 2 is a negative 1. That's 1. Then I do x equals negative 1. So I have y equals 2 plus 1 half times negative 1, which is really just 2 plus a negative 0 0.5, which is 1.5. x equals 0. We have y equals... 2 plus 1 half times 0, which is 2 plus 0, which is 2. So we've got a couple more points to fill in here. Then from here, um, we have x is equal to just plain 1. So I have y equals 2 plus 1 half times 1, which is 2 plus 0.5 or 2.5. And then finally, I have x is equal to 2, so y equals 2 plus 1 half times 2, which is really 2 plus 1, which is 3. So here we now have a list of points that we can plot. 
Um, if we go to our coordinate plane, I'm just going to plot these as normal, like 1, 2, 3. Those will go backwards. And here, we'll just go 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. We'll just plot those as each hash mark equals 1. So now if we go and plot these, negative 2, comma 1 is right here. So negative 2, comma 1. Negative 1, comma, so this is going to be a little bit harder to fit here, but we'll make it work. Negative 1, comma, 1 1.5. Here is 0, comma, 2. Here is 1, comma, 2.5. And here is 2, comma, 3. So we can see the line that we have that is, in fact, forming. I now connect my dots, extend it all the way through the coordinate plane with arrows on the end. There's my good solid graph.